very much, guys. I want to start off by summarizing the opening 15 minutes of the game. Faker channeled his inner Patches O'Houlihan. Dodge, dip, duck, dive, and dodge. He did not take a bouncing bomb from Ziyang at all. Uh, we did see straight up head-to-head -head matchups. SKT were winning the solo lanes, both top and middle, but they were losing the duo lane and by a significant margin. By the 20-minute mark, uh, Piglet was down 40 CS to San. Thanks a lot in part to all the action going on, but what do we take about the lanes, Crepo? I just want to point out how Faker dodges these skill shots. It's not that he's moving left and right and making it hard to predict where he needs to, like where the enemy needs to throw their, their stuff. No, he literally waits until the spell comes up and then sidesteps. When he's landing against the Ziggs, he knows those cooldowns by heart. He waits till the bomb comes up, and the second it comes up, he knows the enemy laner is going to throw it, and he just sidesteps as, as they come up. And it's so beautiful to see uh, there's a fight later on as well where he just literally just dodges everything. Yeah, before we get to that, let's pull up the first Blood replay, I think, very quickly. Uh, Krepo, this is something that OMG started, that we're getting aggressive on the top lane. Talk us through how this played out. So before we play the clip, actually, we want to see what's happening. First of all, uh, Gogong is doing really well in the lane, and they want to push in Impact, and then they want to dive in with Pomelo. That's a good reaction from the team, but because Bengi is on top of his game again, he knows that that's going to happen. That's going to be the play on the map, but then he's a little later and then Impact needs to survive. And how he does that is just, just majestic, actually. Just let roll the clip right here. They're gonna draw the aggro at him. Impact's gonna see the Evelyn come in. He wants to back out, places the pillar, and forces out both both the enemy pl players, then flashes over the pillar, forces Evelyn's flash. Go go and should die here. Gets in the in brush, teleports out, gets hit. Uh, the, if the camera pans over, we see five HP, maybe, roughly. The fact how he placed that pillar, he didn't block one person. He pushed one of them to the back, and one of them to the side, then flashed over the pillar again. He was literally like making him chase around the turret. You could play some Benny Hill music, make it even more entertaining. <laughs> so well played. And this shows, even after that play, Impact goes to base and teleports back to his lane. Yeah. And that's that's literally where he wins the game. Yeah, Exactly. Even worse for MG because Go Going used the teleport to the base here to survive. So he couldn't go back to lane instantly. Impact could, so he got a hit and see is there. And from there on, it was pretty much just a one-way track. Yeah, it was the the assist to that, also the assist. Uh, yeah. Trundle got Impact got in that game that really helped him start to take an advantage in that lane in a matchup that's only going to go more in Trundle's favor as the late as the game drags on. And also, I want to do I do really want to turn it back to Faker for a second because that laning phase was really extraordinary. That is a matchup that it is very hard for Oriana to win. And I was just taking some totals throughout the game. Seven and a half minutes, he was up seventy to forty six CS. That was about the time the kill happened in the mid lane. But by ten minutes even, he was 3-0-0 zero zero at 101 CS. So we're talking nearly perfect CS with three kills in the lane. In contrast, 59 CS only on Ziggs at 10 minute mark. So down on kills, down on CS. It really felt like SKT were individually outplaying OMG in Except all of the bottom. skirmishes. In the solo lanes. Even, I agree with that. A bottom was working in OMG's favor, but even when they did get involved in the team fights later on, you felt like SKT were just out positioning and out rotating in some of those pos uh, moments, those team fights. Yeah, OMG are really bloodthirsty and they rely on their coordination and the fact that they think they're quicker on the draw. Like they think, oh, we're gonna get to your blue buff and we know just kind of instinctively, well, we're gonna get there first, we're gonna get the dragon first and like, if you take a fight, we know we've got more people than you. And they just kind of got greedy over time. They were cutting corners and getting caught out because, well, they blew their cooldowns, but actually Twitch was right there. But this might actually even be the issue for OMG, that they are so fast with their things, they don't get the wards up, they don't get proper vision, they don't even think, oh, who might else be here? So we, we even see them in a team where they go for Bengi, it's actually in the late game, about 26 minute mark around the Baron. They put all their abilities into Bengi, he jumps away, there's no vision around him, Twitch just pops up, shoots onto the ADK, shoots onto the bottom, uh, to the, to the back side of the team and just destroys OMG, and they simply lose the fights because they are so fast let's, and engaging. Let's quickly actually bring up one of those team fights that exemplifies this exact story. With the second team fight we want to bring up, it's a little earlier in the game yeah. than what we're talking about right now. It does take place in the river near the Baron. Deficia, start us off, and Krepo chime in later. Well, so this team fight here is actually also to give some credit to Faker again with his dodging abilities. First, though, go going without his Blade Rune King completed, actually roams down. He's very easy to take down. He's very squishy. And notice Faker here now. From here on, he's just gonna dodge everything Siyang throws towards him. <laughs> even the wave here, he actually dodges off towards is not gonna hit him. And this means he buys enough time, even though Bengi's so low here. Puma Du actually comes all the way mid lane here, all the way from bottom lane to join with his team, picks up another kill once he actually joins in. Vega will die from the last bomb, you can't dodge it all, but then Puma Du joins in. Not only that, but 
Faker's flash in nearly killed Evelyn right there. He was in probably single-digit HP after that, so it was just a very subtle miscalculation on the flash to get the kill onto, a onto Eve. Well, closing thoughts yeah. on Krepa just before I have to move on. Okay. Krepa and Freak. Sorry, Freak. Yay! Yeah, go. I'll, I'll go first. I just want to point out the differences in vision control. SKT is almost almost tunneling on it. We saw a Ruby Sidestone rush almost on the least Sin uh, after his jungle item. And then on the support as well, no finished items, just Ruby Sidestone. They're playing so hard on vision control. They had five pink wards up on the map. Compare that to what OMG is doing. Very few wards. At one point, they pink ward a brush, move past it, sit in the brush, try and bait somebody in, but it was clearly warded. SKT reacts, kills one guy and goes to Baron and get Baron. That's because OMG is so used to playing against opponents with poor vision control, and they just got, yeah, they just got out of vision. Mm -hmm. The other thing I want to point out as well is, and I know this would have changed the dynamic of the lane a little bit, but Alan, and I know Jack mentioned it in the commentary, just picking Annie, right? He's like, they're the, it's the default engager guy, right? OMG's going to go bloodthirst, look for a fight. Flash Tabor's a lot better than Tidal Wave, right? Like the, the Tidal Wave that Baker dodged right there. We just died the Tibbers right there. Like, 100%, you can't really miss that. So, uh, Alan goes back to a more comfortable pick, and that OMG playstyle works a lot better. Yeah, I, I do agree, and I am sorry to cut this off, but we do actually have to throw this one over to Shox, who is with SKT's impact for some infight in the